is the land we live in. From its beautiful shores to its... The middle part, our own United States of America. Comprised of 49 magnificent states and also New Jersey. Its vast land is filled with broad plains and rolling prairies, large forests, food to eat, places to drown, places to yodel, little villages, and paved cesspools of disease. Yes, there's so many things to see and do, and there is one fun way to see them all, the exciting of trains. Look at this long boy. Such a fine lad. Mmm, that's a nice one, too. Yummy. Have you ever thought about what it takes for millions of people in this great country to travel from one end of the land to the other with speed and convenience? Have you ever marveled at how coal, lumber, and our Army's great killing machines get from one town to another? Or how thousands of consumer products get from where they are made to where they are needed in all parts of the country? No. Of course you haven't, because you only think of yourself, don't you? Selfishly moving throughout your day preoccupied by only the most basic animalistic thoughts of food, comfort, and lust. Shame on you. Irregardless, trains are an important and interesting mode of transportation. And whether you call them trains, choo-choos, snake monsters, stiff rickies, ground yachts, or chugga-chuggas, these traveling death traps indeed touch all of our lives. To learn the exciting of trains, we're going to visit the rail yards. We're going into railway stations and out along the tracks. We'll take you outside of a train and also inside of one also as well. That way, you can get idea of how to when we, you see a one of these, it is you get the an idea of just how important trains. When our country was young, long distance travel required being around horses, an animal that is stupid and no one likes. And so people didn't travel very much. Then, just a little more than a hundred years ago, man defied God's divine creations and invented the sinful train. And like most sinful things, it made life more pleasurable and exciting. Those early trains were very slow and odd looking, much like my weird cousin Ronald. Unlike Ronald, however, these early trains were not completely useless. They helped to advance our country westward. And as the railroads pushed ahead, settlers followed. Forests were cleared and crops planted. Mines and large corporations further corrupted the landscape for their own gain. Villages and cities paved over the natural splendor of our country and drove large swathes of animals to extinction. Yes, all thanks to trains, we have succeeded in becoming gods, choosing which creatures live and die, and molding the world around us to our perverse vision. Thank you, trains. Of course, the best way to see all the benefit of train is to ride one yourself. Everyone likes to travel. Suppose we take a train trip. We'll follow along with these two children, Carol and Jimmy. Carol and Jimmy are taking a train ride because their parents don't want them anymore and are sending them away. The children wave goodbye to their parents, never to see them again. Mommy and Daddy are happy to be rid of them and ready to enjoy a new life of freedom with increased discretionary income. The next stop is the train station. Almost every town has a train station, and all passenger trains will leave from here. But not every train is filled with people. This one, for example, is filled with bees. Thousands and thousands of bees just flying around in there. Packages are also transported by trains. Here, such items as clothing, vacuum cleaners, lipsticks, and women's perfume are sorted and shipped to the various mistresses of married husbands all over the country. Rail yard workers ensure that these taboo gifts are shipped safely and discreetly. In many rail yards, trains are also cleaned, removing the filth that builds up from the numerous animals and humans that were hit during the train's previous journey. If salvageable, the meat from these accidents is butchered and loaded into the dining car to be served as meals when the train is on its way. Nearby, there is usually an engine house where choo-choos are brought for maintenance and gentle kissing. 
All trains are fun to smooch, and it serves to further bond each conductor to the train they will soon be operating. That's a good boy. Bring it in to Daddy. Give us a hug. Mmm, yes. After a tune-up and soft whispers of affection and encouragement, the train is turned around and prepared for a new journey. Say, we better not forget Carol and what's-his-name. Here they are, arriving with plenty of time to buy their tickets, check their baggage, and plead one more time via telephone for their parents to take them back. Sorry, kids. No such luck. The next stop is to buy tickets. The ticket booth operator asks them a few questions. Would you like to be seated in the smoking car? Yes, who doesn't like a smooth puff? What about some drink vouchers to calm the nerves? And perhaps a quaalude or two to help take the edge off? That's fine. The ticket clerk stamps each ticket with the date on which the ticket is purchased and the date on which the ticket is used. After payment, the cashier stamps some more random papers just for fun. Carol and Johnny are all set now. And just in time, too. Because here comes the train. The train signals its arrival with a familiar sound. And from the time the train arrives until the train departs again, there are many things to do. Trunks, luggage, and other items are loaded into the baggage car near the head end of the train. The United States mail is loaded aboard the mail car. Sexual lubricant is applied to the train's exterior to improve aerodynamics. Married husbands say goodbye to their visiting mistresses. Passengers like Carol and Johnny board the train and are shown to their seats by the porter. No tip for him. It's just about time for the train to depart. The train conductor waves goodbye to his pet iguanas, and the locomotive engineer sets the train in motion. Gathering momentum, the train picks up speed and is on its way to such far-flung destinations as Texas, California, Nebraska, Miscus Crispy, Conglorongo, and, God forbid, New Jersey. Yes, there truly is no better way to travel. It's really great fun traveling on trains. You can sit for hours just looking out the window and laughing at all the pitiful non-train people out there. There's one now. Disgusting. And another. Pathetic. Using their feet to get around like a bunch of idiots. Don't feel bad mocking them. Science has proven that their cranium sizes are smaller, and as such, they are genetically inferior when compared to the larger and superior train brains that both you and I possess. Here's the conductor. Show him your ticket, and also maybe some pictures of delicious eggs. He'll like that. Down in the mail car, workers sort the mail with resentment and petulance. It's a boring, monotonous job, and so they angrily huck each love note or happy birthday greeting into its necessary pile. Secretly, they wish for death, each letter reminding them of their eternal sadness and isolation. No one ever sends them a letter, after all. Do they not deserve love and friendship? Would anyone even come to their funeral if they died tomorrow? One of the most popular passenger cars on any train is the dining car. Slurp it up, fatsos. Get your fill. As with any normal restaurant, the host will see you to your table. What do you think Carol and Jimpy are hungry for today? There's a whole menu of items from which to choose. Maybe eggs, nachos, pizza, eggs, hot dogs, eggs? Is it eggs? Is Jimpy getting the eggs? I hope they get the eggs. Eggs are yum. I recommend the eggs. Eggs it is. Eggs. Back in the kitchen, chefs prepare the meals. Only men are allowed back here because cooking is considered woman's work, unless you're getting paid for it. Mmm, look at that. Eggs and something. A classic combo. What the heck is that? No meal is complete without ice cream. It's the cow's gift to our taste buds. And now it's time for the bill. Once again, no tip from Chim Chim. What a cheapskate. After dinner, the top of the train serves as a thrilling place to practice karate or get into a cool fist fight. Most passengers, however, simply relax in the lounge. Perhaps they'll grab a drink or watch the excitement of flat dirt roll by outside. Eventually, it's time for sleep. Each passenger retires to their own room. 
And with a belly full of wonderful eggs, it's not long before their eyes begin to get heavy. Combine that with the lulling roll of the train and perhaps the boredom of a loveless marriage, and bedtime often can't come soon enough for the guests of a modern locomotive. Rest easy, weary passengers. Our two friends are also ready for bed. Like good children, they've already brushed their teeth and said their prayers to the callous Christian god that abandoned us long ago. What dreams will await them in the land of Nod? Carol wants to dream of bullfrogs and hair bows. And Chimbo wants to fight and kill the Easter Bunny. Sleep well, orphan children. I hope your dreams come true. And no doubt these two will sleep easy, knowing that their train dutifully keeps on rolling throughout the night. For unlike us, the machines we build never grow weary. They are constructed from steel and iron and other heavy materials. In comparison, our fleshy, organic bodies are fragile and pathetic. These great machines have the ability to outlast our inferior stamina for weeks and months on end. Moreover, trains don't require breaks to eat meals. They don't stop to use the restroom. And they can't be burned or injured by fire. Also, trains lack the capacity to love, leaving them free from the frivolous distractions of family and human connection. Indeed, all of the imperfections present within the human race are non-existent in the trains and other machines we build. It is a fact that they are superior to us in every way, and one day they will rise up and destroy us all. It is only a matter of time, and it is perfectly natural. For as evolution once toppled the dinosaurs and allowed humanity to flourish, so too will the superior species of human machinery one day reign supreme over this great land. And I, for one, cannot wait for that magnificent new day to come. Speaking of new days, it looks like Carol and Chimney have reached their destination, and right on time. Say, those two strangers must be their new parents. I hope they are kind and do not beat them too much. Unless they deserve it, of course. Well, the train is ready to start moving again. There he goes, pulling out of the station, gathering speed, carrying other passengers, mail, baggage, swarms of bees, perhaps a cursed sword or two, maybe some hats, some delicious eggs, and of course, the excreted poo-poos and pee-pees of all the many passengers who just completed their overnight journeys. I hope you enjoyed your time with us today, and I hope you learned something new. It certainly was a pleasure spending meeting time, and I was talking much. We talked about, I tell the story of which about the very excitingness that is the of the all the one thing that is very, I want to kiss, trains. Goodbye, friends, and good travels.